Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to our channel. It's 5 p.m. on a Thursday here in Manila, and uh, you know what that means. It's time again for our Thursday afternoon habit. Here we are in another episode of TMC ITV of Family Construction Without Borders. I am your host, Emma Echeverria, and with me is my dear senior and the current fellow in training in the iEnvision Institute, Dr. Pia Texon. <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Actually, I'm still really amazed at how we're here hosting an episode of ITV. All past episodes had our esteemed senior consultants, all respectives in their fields, and we've only just barely begun, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Doc Pia. You know, in our previous episodes, our consultants were the hosts. Uh, they were able to champion and promote the ideas of tomorrow. Today, however, we'll, we'll take a step back a bit, you know, and concentrate on the building blocks of that tomorrow. We'll focus today's episode on uh, the towards eye doctors in training, and we'll take a look at a game-changing machine that can ultimately be beneficial for everyone's training. On a side note, the Medical City uh, was fortunate enough to be one of the first ones, I believe, in the country who to have seen and used this machine by both consultants uh, and trainees. Oh, yes, I definitely know where you're getting at. We were also excited when that machine arrived in the OR. You're talking about the Zeiss Artivo 800. That's right, that's right. But, you know, aside from the product or the machine itself, it's also a very good opportunity for all of us to sort of see the future of ophthalmology in terms of digitalization and graphic improvement. With these advances, it's equally exciting to know what better learning opportunities we can get, as well as how to provide better service for our patients. Yeah, so to begin our program, uh, let's listen to a short message from the Southeast Asia Cataract Surgery Head of Zeiss, Mr. Samuel Lee. Magandang gabi. I am Samuel from Kao Zeiss. I'm responsible for the surgical ophthalmology business for Zeiss Southeast Asia. Kao Zeiss entered the surgical ophthalmology arena in 2001, and following that, we had many firsts, like the first bi-toric IOL, the AT Torby 709. The first multifocal toric IOL in 2007, the AT Lisa toric, and the first trifocal preloaded IOL in 2012. In 2017, we launched the next generation of EDOF IOL, the AT Lara. And to date, we have the broadest range of monofocal IOL portfolio and a complete range of premium IOLs to meet individual expectations of patients. Last year, we celebrated the 20th anniversary since Carl Zeiss introduced the first optical bar meter in 1999. And since then, the IOL Master has become the most commonly used bar meter in the optomic world with more than 100 million IOL power calculations to date. In 2014, Zeiss launched its first swept source OCT based bar meter and still continues to innovate. We have just introduced total keratometry and we are already working on the next innovation to remain leaders in optical bar metry. In 2019, we launched the first digital microscope for ophthalmology, the Artivo 800. The integrated digital optics from the Artivo 800 provides a stereoscopic 3D image on the 55-inch 4K monitor. It gives the surgeon outstanding depth of field and reduced light intensity, which gives the patient more comfort during surgery. The Add Vision feature on the Artivo 800 gives the surgeon real-time data that is overlaid onto the active image without blocking the surgeon's view of the eye. Another new feature we have on the Artivo 800 is clock connectivity. It allows the surgeon to access data from anywhere with the integration into the Zeiss Cataract Suite. Like many firsts in Zeiss, the Medical City is one of the first few sites in Southeast Asia to have tried and evaluate the Artivo 800. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the ophthalmology department and organizers to help put this session together. With special thanks to Dr. Richard Cole, Dr. Arnold Salut, Dr. Sidney Cheng to sharing their experience they had with the Artivo 800 today. Lastly, I wish you good health and stay safe during this pandemic. Salamat po. Thank you for that, Mr. Lee. Thank you also to Zeiss for partnering with us in making this episode a reality. Now, Eman, who do you think would be the best people to talk about the strengths of the Zeiss Artivo 800? Well, you know, without a doubt, Doc Pia, that would be none other than the doctors mentioned in the video who were able to use and experience it firsthand. That's correct. 
Today, we are so honored to welcome back to ITV our three mentors who graced us with their knowledge and expertise a few months ago. If I may add, uh, for those watching uh, in our channel right now, their episode on pars plana anterior vitrectomy uh, was one of the highest grossing and most engaging episodes uh, that our channel has produced. Also, add to that the fact that it was a very interesting topic with very rich discussion points. That's why I'm sure that we will all get our time's worth this evening. At any point during their presentation, please type your questions in the comments section and we will be asking them these queries later on. Now, our speakers are as excited as we are and they have been preparing for this episode for a couple of weeks now. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back to our show Drs. Richard Ko, Arnold Salud, and Sydney Cheng. All right. So, to give us an overview of the Zeiss Artivo 800 and its surgical application for training is Dr. Richard Ko. Dr. Ko finished his residency at the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital, where he also served as a chief resident. He then finished his Neuro-Ophthalmology Fellowship in Jules Stein Eye Institute, UCLA. Dr. Ko is a founding member and was the co-secretary and scientific program director of the Philippine Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery. Currently, he is affiliated with the following institutes, UPGH, Associate Eye Specialists, American Eye Center, Manila Doctors Hospital, and Medical School. Uh, Dr. Ko will be followed by our video retinal section head, Dr. Arnold Salud. Uh, who will show the applications of the Zeiser TiVo 800 in vitreo retinal surgery and training. Dr. Salud finished his residency and fellowship in vitreo retinal surgery in the University of the Philippines, Philippine General Hospital, as well as in the Nagoya National Hospital in Japan. He's a founding member of the VRSP and currently affiliated with the Medical City and the American Eye Center. And to cap off the first segment of our program is none other than our cataract section head, Dr. Sidney Cheng. Dr. Cheng obtained his degree in medicine at the University of East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center, and he finished his ophthalmology training at our very own Medical City. He also underwent Neuro-Ophthalmology Fellowship at the Jules Stein Eye Institute, UCLA. Currently, Dr. Cheng is an active consultant at the American Eye Center and the Medical City. Okay, so let's not wait any longer. Uh, I now give the floor to our first speaker, Dr. Ko. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Thank you everyone. Thank you Pia. I'd like to welcome everyone to the week's episode of the ITV. This is episode 7. A while back we did episode 2. So uh, the three amigos are back, myself, Dr. Cheng, and Dr. Salud. Uh, to give you a talk about our brief experience with the Artivo 800 while it was parked in our respective clinics. This talk was actually planned long before the pandemic. We started talking about this at the start of the year. And the original idea, the original plan was just to introduce the system and talk about its clinical applications. So, but since the pandemic, I'm actually looking at the system in a whole new perspective. No? And I now think that systems like this may prove useful in the future, no? in the post-COVID new normal. Um, as we learn to coexist with the constant threat of COVID outbreaks, I think that systems like this may play a role in the future of residency surgical training. No? But more on that later. So this is uh, a quick outline of my talk. I'll just give a brief introduction to heads of surgery. We'll talk about the features of our TV 800, and then we'll talk about the clinical applications. Uh, before the last topic, I'm going to call my two colleagues, Dr. Salud, Dr. Cech, to talk about their own experience, and then we're going to cap off the talk with that last topic that I mentioned at the start. So what's head surgery? Basically the performance of surgery, not by looking at the ocular eyepiece of the microscope, but by viewing everything through a large display. The original applications of this were for military and aircraft use, uh, but as you can see, it's not hard to imagine that uh, these systems eventually made their way into medical imaging. And ophthalmology is one specialty utilizing heads of surgery. Another one is neurosurgery, actually. So again, the idea is to minimize your fatigue by allowing you to do surgery in a more neutral physiologic position now, without affecting the quality of the image. Um, currently, there are two types of system in the market. Now, in active system, the 3D image is obtained by showing high-speed consecutive images for the right and the left eyes alternately, and then you have a special pair of glasses suppressing the image in one eye. 
Now, in passive systems, which is what most of these systems are now, the 3D image is acquired by mixing two images horizontally and then passively separating them into polarized 3D glasses. Currently, these are the companies employing heads of surgery and ophthalmology. As we mentioned earlier, we were fortunate enough to have had experience with the Artivo 800. It was actually locked down in our clinic during the pandemic, so it stayed for more than two weeks in our clinic. So I'll just briefly talk about the clinical features, you know, digital optics, ad vision, cloud connectivity. Um, the digital optics of this system really results in outstanding resolution. You know? The depth of field is excellent. You have reduced light intensity. You get very nice natural color impressions. You know? And all of that digital magic happens in this optical system. The optical system features two, three cheap 4K cameras, and then the image is projected onto a large 55-inch 4K giant TV that you can view with 3D glasses. You know? Again, because of this very outstanding optical system, it results in 25% higher resolution, outstanding depth of field, and you get less requirements for your light intensity. There's still some latency. I'm not sure about the exact number, but this latency is uh, imperceptible by human resources. Now, Ad Vision plays essential real-time data where you need it into the, into the view of the surgeon. Now, some of you may have had experience with this before, no? with either the Callisto or the Marion system, but uh, the comments I was getting from those systems before is that Surgeons find that the surgical field is too crowded. Now, when you're looking at these data and the ocular the microscope, they feel like everything is just crowded. But if you place this onto a large 55-inch TV, then you can place the data on the periphery and without uh, compromising the surgical image. No? So you can have your microscope data on one side, the phaco parameters on one side. Again, very spacious surgical field of view, so it doesn't compromise the field of vision. Glaucoma surgery with intraoperative OCT. Um, cornea surgery with intraoperative, intraoperative OCT, and then finally retina surgery. I think Dr. Shalut will talk about this more, but um, what I wanted to say was that you can just imagine the teaching potential of the system. For example, in retina surgery, membrane peeling. No? Everyone who is wearing the 3D is as if they all assisted the primary surgeon in doing this surgery because they will be seeing exactly the same thing. Uh, cloud connectivity, for those of you who are familiar with the Kato system, you know that we have a complete uh, markerless system, the Zeiss Cataract Suite markerless uh, system, which incorporates everything from diagnostics all the way to surgery and even post-operative data. And they have full integration of this system. So now they will do the Artivo 800 into their full cloud connectivity. And of course, there's going to be an app for that, which I think is coming out later this year. We'll talk about that later this year. Other features include, uh, this feature is actually something that's liked by retina specialists uh, because it automatically inverts the image for them and adjusts uh, to their customized settings. Uh, this feature is what I like. No? In the previous uh, heads-up display systems that we used, uh, you can do the surgery either with the oculars or the TV, and you cannot do both. No? So the problem with that is that sometimes uh, midway during surgery, if you have a difficult time with the display, and you want to shift to the oculars, it takes about five or 10 minutes to set things up. No? But with the Artivo 800, you can actually do surgery in the hybrid mode, no? and you can switch back and forth between viewing the TV or viewing the ocular. And if they have to set things up intraoperatively, this takes less than a minute to set things up, so very nice. Okay, clinical advantages, we'll talk about surgeon benefits. There's actually very few patient benefits. So the only thing I can think of is less illumination, and I will talk about that last topic later. Okay, uh, if you're anything like me, the work that you do, this is how you feel at the very end of the long day. You know? Your back is just killing you. Uh, if you look at the literature, there's really an increased incidence of uh, chronic back problems and chronic neck pain, musculoskeletal issues among ophthalmologists. So. And this is the reason why, you know? because there are so many tasks that we do, they're repetitive, we do them every day. The way we examine patients, the way we do surgery, we're always in these very weird positions. No? That's why it's not hard to imagine that on our spine and our necks. No? Even if you're just posing for a photo op, the posture is still off. Okay, so again, if you look at the literature, no, uh, this one study showed a 70% incidence of ophthalmologists having neck, back, shoulder problem by the age of 55. Uh, that study is from Saudi Arabia, again, showing about 70% of eye care professionals reporting this. 
this study showed as much as 50% uh, complaining of musculoskeletal pain the last 12 months. And again, they mentioned this, the most common cause being performing the same tasks over and over again, working in cramped or awkward positions and bending or twisting your neck over and over again. Uh, this study from uh, UA found 50% uh, and this one study found about 7 So it's something like, in the literature, it's something like 50 to 70% of ophthalmologists will have these issues no, long term. And if you compare us with other specialties, this one compared to this family medicine, and again, there's an increased incidence of these issues in our specialty. You know, even a quick survey of the speakers for this ITV episode, Dr. Salud, Dr. Cheng, and myself, uh, we have two out of three, so that's 70% we're, we're consistent with what is in literature. Dr. Cheng said he doesn't have any neck problem because he doesn't have a neck. <laughs> okay, so again, the Artivo 800 gives you the freedom of movement and posture with the least amount of strain to the neck or the back. So actually, you know, after using this uh, whole day surgery, you just feel very relaxed. There's no strain on your neck. There's practically no strain in your back. So when we were using this, I was thinking, you know, maybe this has a potential to prolong somebody's surgical career no? by preserving your necks and your spines. Okay, patient benefits are very few. The only thing we can think of is really the decreased amount of illumination that you have to use during surgery. This is uh, with a regular microscope and you don't want to start the surgery this way, you know, photophobic patient, cannot focus on the light. Usually these are the young macho males. They're usually the most chicken during surgery. And we always say that a comfortable patient begets a comfortable surgeon surgery. So we don't want to start this way. Because the digital optics of the Artivo 800 results in 25% less light transmission. This tree is more comfortable for patients. And if you're those, uh, one of those who are very concerned with the issue of retinal phototoxicity, then this is actually an added bonus. It's a welcome bonus for this system. Side-by-side uh, -side video, the main video is actually using the Artivo. Uh, I'm using 20%, and one on the lower right is a regular microscope at 6%. As you can see, even at 20%, no, the details are clearer, and the colors are better with the main uh, Artivo. And, of course, it's not an equal comparison. You're comparing apples and oranges. No? So it's not an exact comparison. It's just nice to see. To be able to do surgery, you know, looking at the light intensity at 20% and still seeing a very detailed view of everything. Okay, just uh, to show you surgery from start to finish. This is a uh, surgery using full Zeiss uh, system. The Artigo 800, the Zeiss cataract suite markerless, and the Visat is uh, FACO machine. So again, as you can see, you know, um, there's, there's practically no strain on your spine which you're able to maintain your straight position, more ergonomic straight position while you're doing the surgery. And again, we're doing everything under 30 height only. Uh, so then cataract, I'm doing a pothole chop here. I'm just gonna fast forward this in the interest of time. Anyway, you'll be seeing uh, other videos later from Dr. Simpson and Dr. Chen. Again, the emphasis here is that uh, from start to finish, my posture was just straight all throughout. Okay, so uh, before I talk about this last topic, I'm going to call on Dr. Salud and Dr. Cheng to talk about their experience. So back to you, Eman and uh, Pia. Hello. Uh, I'm here to share my experience with uh, 3D now. I'm Dr. Salud. I... Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for inviting me again this time to share my experience with this new technology, uh, which will benefit not only the retina subspecialty, but more so the multitude of anterior segment surgeons, specifically the cataract surgeons. 
um, adequate visualization is paramount to any successful eye surgery. You cannot fix what you cannot see. Although surgical views may be affected by several factors, the viewing system that the surgeon uses plays an important role in achieving adequate visualization and ultimately successful surgical outcomes. It has been repeatedly mentioned in ophthalmology that the development of viewing systems has lagged behind compared to the technologies used in cataract and retina surgeries in the last two to three decades. We are all excited to share that the new developments have started to evolve in the past two to three years. The situation we are all in right now has made the learning process rather difficult for everyone, especially for our ophthalmology residents. Adequate visualization is paramount to successful learning of the different surgical techniques. You cannot learn what you cannot see. Our topic for today will show how this new technology can actually uh, provide outstanding resolution, high magnification with uncompromised depth of focus, not only for the surgeon and the primary assist, but also for the entire team. Everyone can simultaneously, simultaneously learn in the operating room and hopefully soon even in the confines of distant locations. Now, we cannot discuss this new technology without briefly talking about the history of visualization in ophthalmology. Direct visualization of the vitreous took place in Japan in 1950s, but it was only when David Kastner did the open sky manual vitrectomy in the management of complications during cataract surgery that ophthalmology world started talking about it. The development of the contact viewing system took off following the first parse plane of vitrectomy by Robert McEmer in the 1970s, eventually revolutionizing the different contact lenses. Now, non-contact lenses were simultaneously being developed at that time. Now, development started in the late 1960s, but because the images were all inverted, just like when you do your I.O. examination, it was not that popular then. It was when the biome came to be in 1989 after uh, SDI was, um, was discovered in 1987 that surgeons started using this non-contact viewing system. Biome was the most popular then until Resight was launched in 2009. I eventually shifted to Resight that came with the Zeiss Lumera microscope a little over 10 years ago. Resight is considered today as the best among all these. Now, there are two kinds of 3D viewing systems in ophthalmology today. The head-mounted viewing system is still going through a lot of refinements. The main interest at present is the heads-up viewing system. Now, the heads-up 3D viewing system was first reported in the 2010 ASERS. The True Vision uh, 3D system was first used in cataract and other anterior segment surgeries. An analog microscope was fitted with a digital camera. Images and videos were projected and viewed in a 3D HD monitor using passive 3D glasses. Most surgeons were turned off because of the latency factor, and because latency was not that big a factor in retina surgery, developer, developers thought of realigning their strategy. In 2015, it's used for retina surgery, showing comparable results versus the traditional microscope was first reported. Now, in 2016, Alcon, in collaboration with True Vision, launched the Ingenuity mainly for retina surgery. I was fortunate enough to be the first one to use it here in the Philippines on a number of cases in 2017. I will be sharing my limited experience with you in the next few slides followed by my humble experience with the Zeiss Artivo 800 early this year before the lockdown in March, as well as when we resumed surgeries in May. The Artivo 800 was launched during the 2019 ASCRS in San Diego, and in contrast to Alcon's ingenuity, it was marketed as the first digital microscope that can be used as an imaging, information, and teaching tool in cataract, cornea, retina, and glaucoma surgery. Okay, um, it was in 2017, I made use of the first 3D that was brought here in the Philippines. I did several cases on retinal detachment and other cases uh, and in combined surgeries with Dr. Ko and Dr. Cheng when we did phaco vitrectomy. Now learning curve, my hesitation at the time was that if I had a hard time in doing the surgery, it would, as I was told, take time before I could shift to the oculars. No? And that actually caused me a lot of anxiety because 
you know, when doing surgery for retina, especially in one-eyed patients, you don't want to go to get into trouble. So my hesitation at the time, but uh, because I didn't actually have a hard time, uh, it was actually easy to convert or uh, to, to shift into 3D surgery. Now, in terms of image quality, uh, ma magnification, uh, it was pretty, pretty well uh, compared to the analog microscope. And uh, basically, I needed less light, as mentioned by Dr. Ko, to be able to view the same retina that would normally use a lot of light in the uh, analog microscope. Visualization under fluid, air, and oil. In the beginning, I was hesitant, but in the end, I found out it was just as excellent. Now, latency for retina, as you know, as you can see, it was not that much of a problem, but I think for this first product that was launched uh, as 3D, uh, most of the complaints came from the anterior segment surgeons because they could feel the latency in, in doing their surgery. Now, for retina, um, in terms of focusing, um, I noticed that in the first 3D, uh, they had to, they had to uh, set up for both anterior and posterior. So if you're doing a posterior surgery, and then all of a sudden you will shift into anterior, they would have to readjust for you. And that would also take time. And I'm not actually that patient because I want everything done swiftly. Okay, so that was a disadvantage that I noted during the first time that I used it. Now, Dr. Ko already mentioned this. Now, this is very important to me because I, my friends would know in, in, in my field that I actually received quite a number of steroid injections for my neck because of all the pain that I experienced in the past. And this is actually what, what I was so excited about because I didn't have to put my head down anymore. I, you know, the, the more natural position is looking straight ahead. Now, but you know, th there's no perfect machine as of now, but if you can look at the assist now, it's actually the assist now that can potentially have problems because they have to tilt their head to be able to see okay, the monitor. But one big advantage is that when you do the surgery, everybody gets involved. Everybody gets to see what you're actually seeing. Now, the Zeiss Artivo was launched in, I think in San Diego early last year. And uh, well, we got John, okay. We, 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 we were luckier to, got, to get John uh, into helping us learn you know how no matter how good the machine is if it's brought to you and nobody knows how to teach you how to use it then it's going to be useless and i would like to commend our medical representative because he's very much knowledgeable with this machine without him i think i don't think we would have appreciated this machine uh personal experience i don't want to compare the first 3d machine that i used but i can't help it okay learning curve as I told you before, I told you a few, a, few cycle, a few minutes ago, my hesitation was that if I got into a problem, I, it would take time before I could shift and go back to the oculars. With, with Zeiss, you can actually do the surgery with the oculars on. You can use the 3D, and then if you feel like going back into the oculars, you just use the oculars, and, and everybody can still continue watching the 3D on monitor. Now, digital display, to my mind, as far as retina is concerned, it's just as good. Okay, the only difference I noted is that if you compare the true colors, if you compare what you're seeing uh, under the microscope with the first 3D and with this Artivo, I think Artivo gives you a, a more accurate uh, color of what you're looking at. Now, as mentioned by Dr. Ko, less light, there's no visible latency. This time, I think even the cataract surgeons are saying there's no visible latency. Involvement of your other uh, team, they can, they can watch as you do your surgery. Now, as I mentioned, when you shift from posterior to anterior and vice versa, it would take time for the, older, for the first machine, but this time it's, it's auto-adjust for Zeiss. Okay, you can actually move from posterior to anterior, anterior to posterior without losing much time. Now the digital overlays, of course, with Zeiss, they have everything. They have their OCT, they have their 
their even their vitrectomy machines and the microscope settings can be viewed in the monitor. Okay. Ergonomics, uh, of course, I was very happy that I would look, I would, I wouldn't have to bend my neck, but because I used this machine several times, eventually my complaint was that I had to tilt my head either a little bit to the right or the left. It's not straight. So I, in the beginning, I didn't know if I was the only one complaining, but after reviewing and looking at the pictures of other retina surgeons, everybody was doing like that. And I think in the future, the developments would be allowing us to put the monitor right in front of us, okay? And I think what advantage of Zeiss is they own their microscope. I think the better way to do it is to take away that thing over your head and put it on the side so it can look straight. And I would be very much excited to see if Zeiss can do that. Um, even the assist, okay, if you can look at the assist, uh, the, the microscope is actually blocking his view. He would have to reposition himself to be able to see or to have a better view of the monitor. Uh, well, just to share, uh, I was so confident, you know, this patient has ret had retinal detachment on one eye, came to see me just before the lockdown. And because he, the patient wasn't able to go back because of the more than two months of lockdown, he was, the patient wasn't able to go through surgery with that affected eye. But eventually the other eye detached as well. So both eyes had retinal detachment. When I saw the patient after, the, the 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 lockdown the other i had the retinal detachment as well and the artivo was there for me to use i was a bit hesitant to use the artivo but i decided to use it and i had no problems in treating this retinal detachment the other eye was almost lost but this eye that operated on from counting fingers is now enjoying a 2030 vision okay so this is probably one of my last two slides. I want to end comparing the 3D viewing system with the traditional analog microscope. So the main advantage is that one, you don't have to use much light. And with, with, with all the small gauge vitrectomy that you, we're using now, especially with the smaller gauges like 27 and soon the 29 is coming out, the disadvantage of the small gauge surgery is that with a very light, small pipe, you're actually putting in very little light into the eye. And uh, because we don't need too much light with this technology, I think it favors the small gauge vitrectomy system. Now, um, with, with this 3D viewing system, you know, we've always felt that when you do high magnification, you lose some depth of field. But surprisingly, it gives high magnification, maintains very good depth of field and still have a very wide field of view. So very nice. And uh, you can put your OCT and obviously the training benefits and the ergonomics that were already discussed by Dr. Ko. Disadvantage, well, of course, it's going to be costly. Okay, you have to change the entire setup of your operating room, um, especially when you're doing your, your FACO, which you sometimes would have to go on one on either side so you have to move your monitor so in the end it's you might have to dedicate one room for this so you don't have to move around the entire uh, everything in the operating room latency i think uh, you can still the, the the manufacturers can still do some improvement and the assistance discomfort in terms of the positioning of the monitor Okay, uh, I'm just showing you with a, nobody has a 3D, gla 3D glasses with you, but poor mass I 3D glasses, you just induce your, uh, um, uh, try to do, cross your eyes and look in the middle, you'll, you'll be able to appreciate uh, 3D of the surgery. Okay, um, now, um, three dimensional display systems are, showing ever promising results in the field of ophthalmology, both for anterior and segment, surge, uh, segment surgeons. Head up surgery using 3D viewing system has been increasingly accepted. The technology will surely continue to develop with great image quality, outstanding depth perception and spatial orientation. We will be having a more natural visual experience, both as the surgeon and especially as the trainee during this time of pandemic. Uh, 
Uh, this technology will prove to be an excellent tool for live surgery and training in the short term. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I'd just like to be able to share my experiences with the Artivo. Uh, let me share my screen now. Okay. Again, thank you for uh, inviting me to share my experiences with the uh, Zeiss Artivo 800. Um, tonight, uh, I will discuss with you what I felt initially with uh, when I was first invited to use the Artivo. Uh, you know, anytime there's something new, I think most of us would feel the same way. We would feel uh, a little bit apprehensive or worried or uptight if we can adjust to the system. Uh, of course, there's the lack of familiarity with the 3D heads-up display, the difficulty with using the 3D glasses, whether you need to put your uh, corrective or, uh, glasses and use it with the 3D glasses, whether there would be any form of lag of or delay during surgery, and whether you'd have a hard time adjusting to the depth and clarity or focus of the image. Well, um, I'd just like to share with you some tips. Uh, I found that when using the 3D surgical system, uh, it would be best to wear your corrective glasses and then put the uh, 3D glasses over them. I think it makes the image appear sharper and much better. Uh, another thing I noticed, you know, when I first used the uh, 3D system, I, I, I forgot that they dimmed the room light in Medical City. And it was very easy for me to adapt to the to the system, I had no difficulty performing the surgery. the The view was really excellent. However, when we used it in American Eye, I forgot to ask them to turn the lights off. And initially, I was having some difficulty, and then I remembered that you need to dim the light. And definitely, when you dim the light, the the viewing system becomes so much more excellent. The recommendation for the display, they say it should be around four to six feet. Me, I feel that four feet is enough. It's close enough to see clearly and sharp enough. You know? I think any further would not give you the same amount of clarity and resolution that you would want. Uh, another tip that I learned from John of Zeiss is that uh, the image must be kept very well centered on the main light. If, if the eye keeps on moving around and it's not centered on that main light, uh, there is a loss of uh, quality or clarity in the image and even depth. So it becomes difficult. So, uh, you know, this may pose as a challenge in patients who move a lot or who are difficult to manage. Anyway, uh, like Dr. Salud, I'm also not a very patient uh, surgeon. When I go into the OR, I expect everything to be prepared. And it's really, I find it such a waste of time to go in and then have to wait for the microscope to be set up, everything else to be set up. You know, the thing that amazed me with the Artivo is just that uh, is that it, it literally uh, switch and go. You know, you turn it on and it, you can use it. There's no need to install uh, 
uh, or put on the microscope, uh, the external camera. There's no need to calibrate it. The setup was so easy. It was so easy to learn. Uh, I think it was also made easy by the fact that John was there to guide us through every step of the way. And he knew exactly what to do, what to anticipate. He knew the surgeon. <clears throat> Basically, uh, John made things so much easier. Another thing that I noticed with the IT is that, uh, you know, you can leave your oculars on. You don't need to take the oculars off to do the 3D surgery. <clears throat> Let's say the first time you use the machine, you're not comfortable, and you feel that you may need to go back to using the oculars. Just leave the oculars on, do your surgery, and then if at any point in time, you feel that you have some difficulties, then just go back to the ocular. Another thing is if you have the oculars taken off because they're obstructing your view, it just takes about a minute, of probably a minute or two to put the oculars back on and you're ready to go. No, it's not something that you take off, put on, then it takes a while to calibrate and get started again. Uh, I think that, that uh, kind of caught my attention. Uh, another issue when I, I when I was first asked was clarity of the image. Would I be able to see clear enough to do what I want to do, or be able to perform my surgeries uh, comfortably? Uh, because of the the uh, three. Anyway, those two, the the machines, uh, the oculars, uh, the cameras that, that Zeiss has, the Artivo has, uh, and the digital image processing capability, the image resolution was definitely much, much better. I think I got, I felt I got better focus, wider depth of field, uh, and and my eyes were not as tired or stressed after the surgery. There was no need to keep on adjusting my focus up and down. I could see very well what I wanted to do uh, without having to move my feet around too much. Also, as Rich mentioned earlier, uh, we needed less light uh, compared to, I think John checked my microscope settings in medical city. I think I was using close to 100%. Uh, I think when when I did my surgery with the Artivo, it was like 40 or 50 only. So uh, definitely, I think, aside from the, uh, I think it, it made the patient more comfortable and allowed them to stay more still and stop blinking as often. Okay. Regarding latency, <clears throat> honestly, I didn't feel much of a latency. I think the processors were definitely uh, fast enough to process the image and catch up to what we were doing. I did not notice any difficulty or lag between what I was doing and what I was seeing. Therefore, uh, I felt that the system was quite easy to adapt to. Um, another feature that the Artivo had was the Ad vision. It's uh, the ad vision is like a digital cockpit. It places all the information that you need on the screen, as compared to uh, having the information on one ocular. Sometimes it can get confusing. Let's say uh, they put it on your right eye uh, or your left eye. The, all the information is just on one eye. Sometimes it can get confusing. Sometimes you can miss it. Uh, but with the Artivo having ad vision and then it's uh, shown on the screen, I think it makes everything so much easier. Um, because now, because all the information is available on screen, uh, even it's actually easier to see the the overlays where you need to place your incision, if you need to put limbal relaxing incision. Now you're looking at it uh, with both eyes, with 
clear your vision, not just on one ocular. You're using both eyes now to view the, the guide. I think it makes it so much easier such that we can do, we can place our incisions where we want them to be. We can actually do our rexis and follow the rexis guide as uh, best as we can so that we can make a well-centered uh, and rounded rexis as, uh, as needed. Especially if you need to implant a premium lens, a torque lens, or a multifocal or a multifocal torque. I, uh, uh, I think it, it 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 decreases the chances of the lens being decentered. Now these are just pictures of uh, the uh, Rexis guide and how I was able to follow the Rexis guide because, like you are looking at it now with both eyes. I was looking at it also with both eyes, <laughs> not just on one ocular and trying to follow it. Sometimes when you have something on one ocular and the other eye is looking at something else or has a different image, you have some form of visual confusion and it kind of sets you off. But now since you're looking at a big screen, it's in 3D, you're using both your eyes. It's, uh, I think it makes it so much easier. Now, uh, this is the part of when I put the lens implant for the premium IOL. You see there, it's the, the lens kind of flips a little bit. But I think this is, aside from uh, seeing the torque markers there, I think this is an advantage of the plate haptic platform of the Zeiss um, uh, intraocular lenses. It's soft soft enough that you can flip it safe, safely, and you can actually move it clockwise, counterclockwise. The only thing you need to remember is you need to remove the gel uh, from behind the lens. And even if you remove the gel, the, the lens stays centered very well. And, and you're confident that when you're looking at the mark after surgery, the lens implant stays in place. Uh, like Rich and Arnold mentioned, uh, although they said I had, I had no neck. <laughs> uh, actually, the setup of the 3D microscope, when I was able to do my surgeries uh, on screen, sitting straight ahead, looking straight ahead, sitting straight up, actually allowed me to perform uh, more procedures in a more relaxed manner. My uh, neck and back were not strained. I was able to come out of surgery uh, not as tired. Uh, and I was able to uh, actually do more cases uh, in a more relaxed manner. I think Rich will go into this in more detail later on. Uh, for me, that was my experience. That I felt that it was really more comfortable. Um, again, as was mentioned by both Arnold and Rich, having a 3D viewing system will serve as an excellent training tool. Uh, everyone in the OR is engaged. The audience sees what you're seeing. If you're doing a difficult procedure, normally what would happen is that only your assist would really be able to appreciate uh, what's happening. That even if they have a uh, link to a TV, it's not the same. Now, with the 3D viewing system, uh, everyone in the OR is seeing what you're seeing. They, they can see what you're doing. They see the depth of the chamber. They see the posterior capsule moving around. Uh, you know, if, if the lens is tilted or if the uh, there's a sub subluxated lens and you need to do a difficult procedure, they will be able to appreciate that. And, and, and that, that, I think, is a major plus. Another thing is that uh, our resident, Kay, our chief resident last year, was lucky enough to be able to use the Artivo system. I think she was, she's the first and probably only uh, not only, she's the first one. She, she used it early, 
Is it late December or early January? Uh, she was lucky enough to be the first one to use it here. Um, another benefit I see to the RT to 3D viewing system, not just the RT board, is that um, I think it can be used not only for cataract or retina surgery, I think glaucoma surgery, uh, muscle surgery, plastic surgery, uh, you know, being able to use a 3D system that is clear, that is sharp, has no lag, and that is easy to use, will definitely be the wave of the future. It's not just a training tool. I think that's where we are going uh, in the future or later on. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Okay. Uh, uh, we just have a few more slides no, to cap everything. And uh, let's just put things in perspective. Um, you know, before the pandemic, um, I thought that this system was a luxury, you know. I was telling John the rep that uh, I don't think anybody will buy this. I mean, anybody in private practice because it's so expensive, no? And honestly, you can't really pass on the cost to the patient. The patient really won't know whether the surgery was done using the Artivo or not. So I told uh, John last year, I told Zeiss, I think you'd have a better chance of selling this system in training institutions or in teaching hospitals. And true enough, the pandemic struck. So that made us uh, think about the system in a whole new perspective. No? Um, some experts are saying that uh, we will never have a, we will never go back to normal. The new normal will always be like this. There's going to be outbreaks here and there. Uh, people are saying that this whole thing may last anywhere from five to 10 years. So in the future, new normal, we expect a few things will happen. We expect that in the new normal, there's going to be less face-to-face -face lectures and inter instruction. It's already happening now with all these Zoom lectures. There's going to be less meetings and courses, and there's going to be less interaction, movement, and even lingering in the OR. So that's what's going to happen in the future. Um, I've been a faculty of the Department of Ophthalmology at PGH for 20 years, both in the neuro-ophthalmology and the cataract service. And uh, honestly, I've been thinking of uh, retiring or slowing it down. It's a very toxic job. Um, so I've been thinking of slowing it down in the last few years. No, I'm not getting any younger. I've assisted hundreds and hundreds of beginning surgeons. I don't claim to be the best faker surgeon, but I can claim to have assisted the most number of beginning faker surgeons ever. No? hundreds and hundreds of them. In PGH, you know that we graduate anywhere from eight to 10 residents a year. And in the medical tradition of see one, do one, and teach one, you know, I have to do this 10 times every year, you know, for every type of procedure, both as a primary surgeon and as a first assist for basic FACO and advanced FACO in complicated cases, you no? Know? So I have to do that for every case, for each and every rest. Uh, with the system, I think I may only do this once, and this will be magnified. 10 times by the system. No? So in addition to this potentially prolonging one surgical career, I thought this might also have the potential to prolong your teaching career. So this will, I think, might easily reduce my visits to the OR tenfold. Now imagine this, you can just do one demo surgery for each case, for example, FACO. The nine other residents can view the surgery with 3D glasses. They don't even have to be in the OR at that time. They can review it later at their own pace. And uh, assist surgery for every case and other nine residents are assisted by other faculty i only need to sub they only need to submit their videos to me and i can review the videos later it's as if i assisted all 10 residents because i'll be seeing exactly the same thing that the faculty saw when they assisted in surgery so i think again this has the potential to minimize the movement of people in the or really all you need later and the 3D goggles are similar 4K TV at home, and you're set. You can view this anytime. So that's for the future. And I think that this is something that should be considered by teaching hospitals and training officers. No? You know, sometimes we graduate residents with various skills in FICO. Some are better than the other. Some have done more than the other. And this depends on a lot of things. No? 
Sometimes it's also dependent on who the PICO mentor was, no? whether they pick up some bad surgical habits from their mentors or whether their mentor was good or not. Now, if you have this, I think that the training will be more uniform. You can show them, for example, this is the basic technique in FACO. This is the basic technique for, say, zonulysis or bunesen cataract, and they can vary their techniques on their own a little bit later. The thing is, they'll be seeing exactly the same instructions as everybody else. So I think that this has the potential to be to have more uniformity in surgical training. But more than that, I think, more than the training, I think that this system has the potential to make our skills assessment evaluation more uniform. No? Imagine, no? maybe in addition to the PBO logbook later, residents are asked to submit surgeries, uh, videos of their surgeries using this system. And if they have, say, 10 evaluators looking at this uh, surgery uh, with this system, it's as if all 10 evaluators actually assisted the resident. No? I, again, I'm thinking about the potential for teaching of this system in the future. No? Again, it has the potential to minimize movement in the OR because it will magnify the teaching easily. Um, I envision this in the future. No? We know that the Philippine Society of Cataract Refractive Surgery we've been holding fake of video conferences several times a year for the past 20 years. Um, and maybe one day we can have something like this. You know, We have people from residents from Baguio, live from Mindanao and Visayas, and everybody's looking at exactly the same thing. Oh, I forgot to wear my 3D goggles. So when we're instructing them, no? everybody will be seeing exactly the same thing as the surgeons who actually did the surgery. Again, imagine the teaching potential for this in the future. I uh, just want to show you some action shot. This is uh, Corina, Chief Resident in PG. As you can see, they use the system even without you know. There's practically no learning curve. There's no adjustment. It was there. They just used it immediately without any supervision from me. This is uh, Mel, my third year resident. Again, they were able to do everything. I wasn't even there when they set this up. Uh, in the medical city, this is Kay and Denise. As you can see, there's not even any consultant present uh, when they did their surgery using the Artivo. And when it was parked at the American Eye Center, you know, with some residents from other institutions actually watch us. As mentioned by the two previous speakers, it's a very interactive atmosphere in the OR. You know, everybody's involved. And we've actually used the system also not just for FACO and retina surgery. We've used it, uh, Dr. Aquino has used this for filtering surgery. Alnet, I think, has used this for pterygium and even INC surgery. You know. just, it's a very nice interactive system in the OR. Everybody's just involved. So, uh, just to recap everything, uh, heads of display systems like the Artivo 800, they may have a role in the future of surgery and training. There are many advantages and benefits that we're seeing now. Surgeon benefits, you have exquisite imaging, you have freedom of movement and posture, and it has the potential for long surgical careers. Very minimal patient benefits, I think, the main being there's more comfortable during surgery because of less light requirement. And this is really what excites me about the future. I think this has the potential to magnify the teaching and training process. In post-COVID new normal, these systems may maximize surgical training while reducing people interactions and movement in the OR. So we'll see what the future holds. But I think this has the potential to be a game changer in the future. So has the potential not to prolong not just your surgical career, but probably your teaching career also. So that ends my talk. Again, I want to thank the residents of Medical City for their fantastic animations and uh, slides. Uh, back to you, Evan and Pia. All right, those were all such good presentations and definitely very interesting, especially during a current situation. So it felt like we were all part of one big ride. Did you see how clear those videos were, Eman? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. But, you know, of course, it would have been better if you know if our audience could have seen it firsthand while wearing 3D goggles themselves. You know, it was like uh, operating in an IMAX theater. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Eman. Definitely, we cannot discount the fact that VR may be the future of surgery, not only in ophthalmology but in also other specializations. As well. Okay, now I'm sure we have a couple of questions from the audience uh, based on those fantastic presentations. For those who haven't sent your questions yet, you can still write it down at the comment section. 
So uh, to start, can we see our first question? All right. Uh, any one of the three uh, the, uh, consultants may answer. How did you adjust from using the oculars uh, of the microscope to just using a screen for your procedures? Uh, you you adjust by going from this way to that way. That's the adjustment. <laughs> no That's adjustment. The adjustment. From this Honestly, to this. That's no adjustment. adjustment. Practically no adjustment. And again, if for those who are a little wary about using a new system for the first time, you know, you can uh, do surgery using the hybrid mode. No? You can just shift back and forth between the heads of display and the oculars of the microscope. Now it's very easy to set things up. So for those who are worried about using a new system, do not because there's practically nothing to it in terms of transitioning to this system. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, do you have another question? Okay, so um, for the second question, is there a difference um, with the post-operative results between using the microscope and the RTVO? Any consultant can answer me? I what believe Dr. Salud, Salud mentioned about uh, 2030. So, you know, that was a pretty fantastic result. Uh, as far as the journals have read regarding retina surgery, there's none. Okay, the success rates are just the same. If you expect that the results might be a little poorer because of uh, uh, the adjustments that new surgeons will have, none, none. Now, in my case, in I think if I combine the two kinds of 3Ds that I've used, my results are just exactly the same as when I used the analog microscope. Now, just to answer about the adjustment, and I was, as I told you, I was worrying about you know, the need to shift to the oculars, that never happened, especially for the Artivo. Agree. <laughs> agree. I agree. All right. That's very reassuring to know that that's how it is with um, transitioning to the Artivo. Um, I think we have another question. All right. Uh, is there a lag time between the actual surgery and the images uh, or video seen or TV? I think this, I believe they're talking about the latency between the microscope and the TV. Anyone would like to answer this? Uh, I, I don't have the exact number, but the previous system that we used, they gave a number. And the number for the RT was actually much smaller. Uh, I don't think Zeiss wants that number to be public. It's <laughs> very, very, no, no, no. Uh, well, I know the number. Perceptible, you know, don't, I don't think they want to hear that. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> but it's, it's something like 60 microseconds. It, it's imperceptible by human yeah. reflex. Literally mm -hmm. imperceptible. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Okay, so um, we have another question. Does the large size of the screen in the OR pose as a problem? Um, does it get in the way of the rest of the OR team? No, it's the other way around. It's the OR team who gets in the way of screen. <laughs> <laughs> because there's so many, so many people in OR, they're all watching. Now. So it's sometimes it's them who are actually obstructing the big screen, but really <laughs> not a big issue. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I think that was the last question. All right, for, for now, that's the last question. So thank you very much for the participation of everyone who sent in those questions. Uh, as you may might have seen during our promotions last week, we, uh, together with Zeiss, uh, will give special prizes to the top two institutions with the most number of registrants for this episode. Okay, so before we announce the winners, let us listen to a short message from our sponsor, Zeiss.
Okay, again, thank you to Zeiss for sponsoring this episode and for giving away these prizes. So, Dokia, do we know uh, who our winners are? Okay, so after tallying done by our registration committee prior to the start of the episode, we are pleased to announce the top two institutions with the most number of registrants. Um, these are St. Luke's Medical Center Eye Institute and East Avenue Medical Center DOH Eye Center. All right, congratulations. Okay, so uh, both institutions will be receiving a special gift certificate from Zeiss. Uh, you will get one CT Asfina lens, of course, with your preferred power, and a pack of Z-Hyaline gel. Again, congratulations. Okay, so if your institution did not win, don't fret as more prizes will be given away. So stay tuned. Okay, so now that we know how exactly the Artivo uh, system works, uh, it would be nice to hear straight from the experts the feedback on its usability. Yes, so to tell us more about the Zeiss Artivo customer experience, we have with us tonight our special guests from Zeiss, Martina Stark and Michelle Van White. Okay, so Martina Stark is an industrial engineering graduate. Uh, she has finished her MBA at the University of Augsburg. She's currently the product manager for the Zeiss Artivo 800. With her is Michelle Van Wyck, who has been in the field of ophthalmology for 15 years, and she works as a training and application support manager for Zeiss. Okay, so again, we will open the floor for questions after their talk. Um, feel free to ask them or any of our first three speakers through our comment section. So let's listen now uh, to this segment from our sponsors with Zeiss. Hello, my name is Michelle van Bey. I'm from Zeiss Meditech in Oppokochen. I'm working in the learning management department and responsible for the surgical ophthalmology microscopes, the training and application support. Hello everybody, my name is Martina Stark and I'm a product manager here at Zeiss Meditech and I'm responsible for the Artivo 800. Zeiss Artivo 800 was so far a great success. Many devices were already sold, especially in Japan and India. What are the reasons for the success of the first digital microscope in ophthalmology? Well, I think what the best way to answer this is to have a look at our customer survey results. We asked our size or T-800 customers about their experience with the product. So what do they think about the product? Well, more than 90% of anterior segment surgeons confirmed in our customer survey that ergonomics is a main advantage of working with the Artivo 800. This is indeed the most obvious benefit of a digital microscope, the heads up position. Note that there is no increased stack height of the microscope head. Ergonomics allow you to do surgery in a more relax position and reduce back and neck pain. Our customer, Dr. Sri Ganesh from India also says he doesn't want to change back to his oculars. As said in the beginning, Size RT-800 is the first digital microscope. It contains the patented digital optics. This new optical concept combined with two 4K cameras in the microscope head allow you to use less light during surgery and so help to increase the patient comfort. Dr. Cole already told you about that and more than 75% of surgeons report a significant reduction in light intensity when working with the Zeiss Artivo 800. Furthermore, it allows you to depict the surgical field in a very high magnification in a high resolution. 25% higher resolution than a competitor system. Last but not least, digital imaging also enables you to benefit from an outstanding depth of field so that refocusing can be reduced. You heard this already from Dr. Shane. And talking about details, Eric, Merton is in, Eric Mertens is impressed by the details that weren't so visible before. You can see his quote here. There is the option to have digital overlays in the picture. 
do we call this concept ad vision? It enables you, for example, to see the patient information, the parameters of the microscope, which lens you are using. Digital assistant functions such as markerless lens alignment or even OCT overlays is available. You are always fully in control. As mentioned from Dr. Stephen Vole, a statement was made where he expresses the value of the OCT overlays displayed on the monitor. But don't worry. If there are colleagues in your team who prefer to use the normal position looking through the oculus, they can still use them. It takes not even a minute to put the oculus on the system and activate the hybrid mode. The 3D picture on the big screen will remain, so everybody else in the OR can see the surgical field. This is why the RT-800 is preferred as a tool for teaching. Dr. James Whelan from Canada is excited about how everyone is immersed in the situation. Known features such as the fundus viewing system, the Resight, the Slit Eliminated, the Vigilux are also available with the Zeiss Artivo 800. It can come with the motorized tilt. Zeiss Artivo 800 can also come with the integrated intraoperative OCT that helps you to see more details during the surgery. The picture that is depicted in high contrast on the screen fully leverages the potential of the OCT engine. Also here you can control the OCT functions with a foot control panel, for example, changing the scan size. No matter which accessories you choose or not, you will get an integrated solution from size tailored to your needs. This enables a smooth workflow. If you are interested in any further information, please check the QR codes below. We are happy to offer virtual consultancy and remote demos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and stay safe. All right, that was a great eye-opener brought to us by the top executives of Zeiss.
Yes, definitely super interesting. Um, so we are now approaching the latter part of our program. But before we proceed, we will be giving away three more IOL and Z Hyaline gel bundles, care of Zeiss. For this part of the program, we will be posting three trivia questions um, regarding the Zeiss Artivo 800. And the first person to send a text message with the correct answer to the number posted on your screen will win the prize. All right. So please note again that this contest is limited to the viewers from the Philippines. Uh, the winners will be notified by our production team, and the names will be announced at the end of the show. Uh, please text your answers to 0917-800-2532. I think it will be shown uh, below. Uh, Pia, can we uh, know our first question? All right. So for the first question, um, what is the first digital microscope for ophthalmology from Zeiss? All right, so please text your answers to 0917-800-2532. Is that your number, Dr. No, that's <laughs> not. Uh, no, okay, okay. Uh, there we go. All right, yeah, so okay. it's flashed at the bottom of the screen. All right, I think... <laughs> I think we have a winner. All right, we have a winner. So the answer to that question is none other than the Zeiss Artivo 800. Again, please text your answer to the number that's flashing below. Okay, for our next question, what is the name of the swept source biometry machine from Zeiss that is capable of integration with the Zeiss Artivo 800? Right. Don't forget to text, your num uh, to text your answers to the number flashed below. Okay, so um, thank you to those who have been participating. The answer to that question is the Zeiss IOL Master 700. Okay, so please get ready for question number three. This is your last chance to win a prize. Okay, for question number three, what is the name of the combined FACO and vitrectomy machine from Zeiss? which may be integrated with a Zeiss Artivo 800. Okay, let's uh, flash the question again. I can I also, I'll just repeat the question again. So okay. what is the name of the combined FACO and vitrectomy machine from Zeiss, which may be integrated with a Zeiss Artivo 800? Okay. Ah, here we go. All right, the combined FACO and detective machine. Okay, so just please text your answers to the number below. Okay, so that was our last question. And the answer, of course, is the Visalis 500. So congratulations in advance to our winners. Uh, before we wrap up this episode, um, uh, as you can see, we have all our speakers today. Um, to answer some questions, any remaining questions? Yeah. Thank you again, everyone, um, for your informative lectures. We're, I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone that this is a very interesting and um, wonderful lecture. Uh, we just have a few questions to ask our speakers. Um, I think the question is best answered by our Zeiss representative. So yes, um, we have d size uh, Kinemo and the Artivo, which are both 3D systems, obviously. And since both are from size, there are some overlaps. But do you know, as both are for different applications, one is for ophthalmology, the other for neurosurgery, there are different requirements in, for both disciplines. So the systems are not exactly the same. There is some overlap, but since the requirements are different, it's two different systems to fulfill the, the to serve the purpose, ideally, of to, um, right, okay. Thank you for your answer. Um, so do we have any other questions? All right, is, this, is the Artivo compatible with other machines used for cataract or retractomy? I'm assuming, of course, with the other Zeiss uh, products. 
Okay, I can I can answer here. Um, unfortunately, not at this stage. We are as we provide always the full solution with our ophthalmo ophthalmic um, products, we we go with the Vizalis only. So uh, we cannot have the add vision functions uh, from the FACO parameter if it's not the Vizalis. So not we can't add the, the Alcon or other companies' uh, FACO devices, no. All right, thank you very much. Okay, we so, have... Yeah, we have another question. Um, uh, is it comfortable to be wearing the 3D shades over glasses? Uh, is there another way to be comfortably wearing my usual glasses and still appreciate images on the screen? I believe Dr. Cheng mentioned this a while ago. <clears throat> yes, um, I think it's, it's not difficult. I just wear the 3D glasses over my these glasses, then I take them on the side and I tape them here <laughs> and I look like an idiot, but it works. It's no, still but, clear. Yeah, but I tried it with my glasses off. Yeah. I tried I, it with my glasses off. It, it's really difficult. I need I, my glasses on. I would like to add here that you can um, get the clip on as well because it's polarized and um, it's got the certain, um, this can be ordered for you. So you don't have to, you know, have the actual glasses, 3D glasses on top of your glasses. They, they can provide the clip on version as well. Mm -hmm. so even Unfortunately, having... when we did the demo surgery, the clip on glasses were not available yet. But uh, they, they told us that, yes, they're available in Germany, not just in our unit when we tried the system. Yeah. I suppose if uh, in the future you're going to be using the system a lot, uh, I suppose you can have your uh, glasses with your error refraction made together with the 3D glasses. Would that be possible? To write the error of refraction into the 3D glasses. So all I can say here is, as you know, Zeiss is the leader in innovation. So uh, you never know. Maybe this can come. Uh, this is something that we definitely are looking into. But at this stage where we are, you know, I can't give you any any feedback or any definite answers. Great. So we'll have to make with either the clip on or the um, taping the glasses to the... Uh, yeah. 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 Or, or, or what I did once actually was to wear the contact lens for my error refraction for distance. Oh, and great. The, yes. Yeah. So it's another way to do it. Just wear contact lens for the distance and then mm -hmm. use the 3D lenses. I also saw users who very often use uh, the 3D technology and are wearing spectacles. They got a polarization coding on their prescription classes. So if you wear use that, this is also a thought to get a coding for your glasses as well. It's super mm -hmm. fun. Great. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, do we have other questions? Next question, please. Any more? I think there's a couple more. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Wow. Obviously, obviously, this uh, question is going to come up uh, sooner or later. Uh, without stepping on too many toes, uh, is there a way for us to know how much uh, the Artivo would be? So I would recommend, um, since you know the Artivo can come in lots of configurations from an anterior segment system, it can be equipped with the Fundus viewing system and even with the integrated OCT. So there's a very wide range, and I really uh, uh, recommend to um, contact your like, local salesperson because I don't want to throw a number in and this and not fit at all the configuration you're interested in. So uh, please refer to your local size size rep; he will be the best one to give you an answer on that. Very <laughs> affordable. John. <laughs> <Such fun. laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have two more questions. Okay, so the next question is, how do you reduce the bowl-like effect? Okay, so I'm not too clear on, on what the question is, but I can somehow think um, this is the visualization that you, you see on the, on the um, monitor. And here, 
you know, um, with Zeiss, I always say if you want to drive a Mercedes-Benz, like you also said, if you taught the right way, then you get phenomenal results, right? And with us, because if you have a look, we've got the OCT engine, we've got the 3D monitor and the microscope. We, we recommend that we really follow the route of par focality. Um, this is um, just getting all the focal planes together and with this um, as well, if you've done this procedure, you actually also don't have to refocus so often. If you, if you get your par focal on your highest magnification, you find that you don't have to refocus all the time. Your, your, your visualization is, is perfect then. That's a very good answer. Thank you so much for that. Okay. Um, do we have another? Yes, we have one last question, I think. It's last I, I think two more, two more. So uh, will this topic be included in the FACO course next year? I think this is uh, goes hand in hand with Dr. Ko's involvement in the... Uh, in PGA. I've been um, I've been trying to get guys to uh, call a live surgery using the Artivo, and everybody in the audience is wearing 3D glasses. Wouldn't that be nice? Mm -hmm. So they couldn't do it for this uh, uh, basic course in Faco. Maybe next year. Maybe for 2021. That's still a pipe dream. Huh? Again, wouldn't it be nicer presenting something? Everybody in the audience wearing 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. It's as if everyone in the audience actually assisted you during surgery because they'll be seeing exactly what the surgeon is seeing. Mm -hmm. That would be very so, nice to be part. Possibilities are endless, really. Okay. Okay, so um, we have one more question. In those centers that use the RTVO 800 regularly, how has it use impacted the cost of doing surgery? Uh, perhaps you can get one from uh, American Eye and uh, one from Zeiss. Uh, in terms of cost, there's there's no extra cost really, uh, because it was free. The demo unit was free, and as I mentioned earlier, now it can be very hard to pass on the cost, the extra cost to the patient. Uh, it's really, the patient would mind. The patient would hardly know whether the surgery was done or did, under our team or under the regular microscope. So it will be very hard to pass on the cost to the patient. And that's why I think that uh, you have a bet setting this system in training hospitals and teaching cells. I think that's the key for the future. Okay, I, I can add something here. Just, you know, we've got an integrated solution. So, of course, I think at the end of the day, how it could benefit the patient is actually reducing surgery time. Um, you uh, you don't have to, you know, you save time by not having to add the ocular, you know, with, our, with the competitor system. Um, our foot control panel of our device has got the OCT already on it. You don't have to have an extra foot control panel like other competitors. Um, and um, then, of course, you know, with our 4K camera that we have, I think the surgeons really are sure where they're working and for, be feeling more confident. And I think this can also play a huge role in reducing time instead of being unsure of not, you know, very dedicated to where they're working. I think this, this has an effect as well. And then I think in cataract surgery, especially, what I've heard, you know, being in the field is um, latency can have a huge effect on, on doing cataract surgery because of the delay of the instrument coming. And as our speakers, thank you, has mentioned in this presentation or in this uh, program today, there's hardly any latency. And I think that also it, it reduces the surgery time. I don't know. Um, if you've got anything else to add, Martina. Yes, I think if we are talking about cost, um, we have to distinguish between the initial cost, uh, we talked about that, and the recurring cost. And as far as I understood the question, it was about the recurring cost for each surgery. So um, depending on what you compare, if you compare, for example, to the Mera 700, a conventional microscope, not sure if there is, um, I don't think there's additional cost. You may reduce the cost, as Michelle mentioned, if you compare to um, 
other competitor systems, keep in mind that if you have an integrated solution, you get rid of additional workflow steps. Mm -hmm. um, thinking in terms of consumer, something else, I don't think that there's a difference in the current costs. Okay, thank you very much, everyone who answered. I suppose that's the last question that we have from our viewers. All right. Okay. So I'd like to ask our speakers if they have any final words, any tidbits of knowledge that they'd like to uh, share with us. Request, request Zeiss for another round of demo surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Is it still here or the last week I think it was in St. Luke's. I'm not sure if you've pulled it out already. Maybe there should be a second round of uh, a lot of institutions will now be interested in having the Artivo demonstrated in their hospital. So maybe we can have a second round of parade of instruments. Yeah, that would be good. Don't send it back. <laughs> yeah, because there are, there are only few, very few institutions who were able to uh, get the chance for this round. So maybe there should be a second round for the other institutions. I'm sure after this, a lot more institutions will be more interested in uh, trying this system out. And again, there's, there's no learning curve or anything you can just tell like demonstrate it park it there you can easily use it in an instant without yeah. any learning curve. so okay. i I've, I've been fortunate you know before corona to actually be in the field with artivo and i saw the questions coming you know, because it's a the, the the big screen and if it will like really be difficult to set up in or but i can say that we have a very consultative approach with this. So this is not something that we just push into the OR and start surgery the same day. There's a proper planning involved in this, not just with the surgeon, but also with the OR manager, the OR, the nursing staff to make sure that the device is standing on the best possible way and that it doesn't disturb the workflow as per normal workflow for um, the OR. So that's just what I would like to add to that. Yes, that's a good way to maximize integration. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. That's really good. All right. So okay. thank you, everyone, for those uh, tidbits of knowledge. So Zeiss would like to invite everyone to its surgical webinar series, which will begin after the show uh, on using the latest digital technology for glaucoma patient workflow. Uh, if we can just uh, show the QR code on the screen, I'll just scan it later uh, to register. Yeah, they'll flash the QR code that you can use to register. Okay, maybe maybe later they'll flash it. Okay, so um, before we end, I think it's time to announce the winners of our trivia questions. Uh, again, you will be receiving an IOL and a gel bundle from Zyx. Um, So the winners um, will be flashing the PowerPoint for in a while. So apologies for the delay. Um, the winners are, the first winner is Dr. Alan Gerard Ostriaco. Congratulations. Oh. <laughs> Our second winner is Dr. Mary Caterina Francia. Oh, it's Karen. <laughs> And then our third winner is Dr. Adele Samsung. All right, congratulations, everyone. Okay, so I think that's that's it, Eman. Uh, this has been such a great learning and hosting opportunity. And I would like to thank TMC ITV for making us uh, part of it. Uh, for the next episode of TMC ITV, join us again at 5 p.m. on the 10th of September with some of the top retina specialists in the country as they delve into the future of one of the most common retina conditions, diabetic retinopathy. Uh, please uh, see our events poster for more details. We'll be posting that in a few days' time. Uh, please don't forget to click the thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon uh, to get notified whenever we release new videos. Um, is the QR code ready for... Um, so that people can register for this webinar series. All right, oh, so there you go. There. So this is the QR code that you can use um, to register for the surgical webinar series of Zeiss, which will begin uh, late after the show. 
All right. So um, I guess that's it. Thank you again to Zeiss for sponsoring this episode. And thank you to our speakers, Dr. Ko, Dr. Salud, and Dr. Cheng, and our guests from Zoom, Martina Stark, and Michelle Van Wyk. Yes, Emma. <laughs> thank you. That's right. And of course, thank you also to all our attendees for joining us today. So once again, I am Pia Texon. And I am Emma Echeverria. We will see you in the next episode of TMC ITV Ophthalmic Instruction Without Borders. Thank you. Thank you.